Greetings everyone, this is INT2 and I'm here to tell you how to panic buy correctly because I am a gamer and I know about the apocalypse and survival and I play a lot of DayZ. By the way, I've just gotten into Chalky Milk. People at work got me into it. I never was a big Chalky Milk fan. But now I'm really into it. Um, so I just got back from the store. Here are some of my receipts. Dog, why you can't have Chalky Milk? <laughs> you can't have Chalky Milk. You're a dog. What are you doing sniffing at me? What are you doing? So, the other day I made my Boy Scout video or the Field Rangers video. And the one I made before that I used my phone. I realized my phone is really shit at video. I don't know why, it was just really stuttery. So I have to do this on my regular cam. So I took some pictures with my phone. It takes good pictures. Um, so let's see, the last, where should I start? Okay, first of all, your toilet paper. Let's talk about toilet paper. I had 10 or 11 rolls when everybody started panic buying toilet paper. And that was about a week, almost two weeks ago. Yeah, about 12 days ago. When it got really crazy and all the shelves just emptied out, right? So, in that two weeks, I'm still on the same roll of toilet paper as when it saw, all saw started. So, that was Angel Soft Double Rolls. I just went and bought these at a local grocery store. Oh, these are at the Family Dollar. And they were like limiting you two per person. And it's $5 for 12 they were selling like individual rolls for like a dollar a roll. So this is coming out less than a dollar a roll, I'm pretty sure. Five for 12, yeah. That'd be 12 for 12 if it were a dollar. So it's, a, it's less than 50 cents a roll, right? Yeah. But these are not double rolls. That's where I thought like I got gypped. These are regular rolls. So that's not as good as I thought it was. Cause if a double roll lasts you two weeks, I've got about 20 weeks already, plus this. So I'm probably good for nine months or a year on toilet paper hopefully so i'm good on toilet paper uh toilet paper is not even a big deal if you run out you can take a shower wash your ass in, in the shower that's not what you gotta worry about if you play daisy you know the value of beans baked beans pinto beans kidney beans black beans chili beans any kind of beans rice your staple food your potatoes because potatoes kind of go bad pretty quickly uh so let me see, where's my pictures at? First of all, I put a picture on Facebook that I probably didn't. It's got, it's a little bit, I gotta blur some stuff out of it. But this is what I look like at work because we've instituted this crazy policy. I've seen a lot of people, I've been looking on Reddit. A lot of people are talking about like, what's work like with the coronavirus? And everybody's like, oh, we're not doing anything or we're not taking it seriously at all. We're all gonna die. We're doing the complete opposite in the fucking goofy, silly range that it's like not even funny. I actually got in trouble for calling somebody stupid or saying the policy was stupid because... Okay, let me just go back. This, this is a long story. Okay, so we started out putting up the signs, you know, like everybody else is just now starting to do. Saying, like, if you've been sick in the last two weeks, we started making people sign, like, new contractors coming in. They had to sign a form saying if you've been out of the country, like China or Iraq or uh, Italy, like six countries, Korea... If you've been in any of those six countries or if you've been coughing or sneezing in the last two weeks and one guy actually came in and said, yeah, I've had a cough in the last two weeks and checked it. And I'm like, well, you got to go home. And the other guy that he was with was his bride, so he had to go home too. So everybody got pissed off because we had to send him away. But that was the rule, you know. If you come in and you say you've been coughing the last two weeks, just get the fuck out. You can't come in. So that was already pretty stupid. Then they started making us, like, take people's temperatures and they set it at like 100.9 or something was the limit. If you're over that, then you got a fever, you gotta get the fuck out. So, uh, we had to like make everybody come through one entrance, everything else was locked down, and that was fine. We had like a table in the lobby, and we got these little shit thermometers that I guess are pretty accurate, but it didn't seem like they were. So if somebody comes in and it's been raining, they're, like, they're almost hypothermic. We didn't realize this till the other day, so that's a big mess. So we have to start wearing rubber gloves and a face mask and safety glasses was the first rule. And then they like said, well, if the safety glasses are fogging up because of the face mask, then you can wear these face shields. So now we got this big face shield. So uh, <laughs> it, it looks fucking stupid. And the face mask doesn't prevent anything. It only keeps you from getting yourself disease, your germs on somebody else, which we already been cleared, so we're not sick. So what's the point of us wearing it? 
man, it's fucking mess. And uh, then they started saying, like, when we're taking somebody's temperature, you can't call out the temperature because they move the desk from the lobby to the cafeteria, which is the worst place to put one of these kind of places where you're checking people's temperature because the first they wanted to put it in the back of the cafeteria, which means somebody comes in, they're mixing in with all the people that are already sitting there at desks and they're like walking around buying stuff from vending machines and like using their credit cards and like talking to people. Everybody's farting and sneezing and laughing and making jokes and it's like a big fucking a frat house in there. And like that's where we want to set up the temperature station. Okay. So then they realized how stupid that was. I was pointing it out to them and then they moved it to the front. And then it's still pretty bad. And then everybody's coming in using the same ink pen. And they're getting like hand sanitizer all over all the paperwork that they got to sign. They got to sign in this thing. You got to give them a handout saying, here's the current numbers of how many people got the coronavirus in the state and in the county. Here's what we're doing to prevent it. Here's some paperwork if you have to be sent home to like take two weeks off and get paid for it and all that stuff and use your vacation time. And all this like paperwork is getting like messed up with hand sanitizer. So then yesterday they brought in a forward looking infrared radar like you would look for Bigfoot or Ghost with and that's like expensive as fuck and I know somebody's gonna steal it or lose it like they already stole like a box of rubber gloves and a box of face masks pretty much or they're using them so much that they're just like going through them faster than you can't even buy the face masks anymore you can't even order them so it's a big mess and then they started saying oh did I say that already like if you call out their temperature we could be uh, uh, it's a HIPAA violation and I'm like, no, we can't violate HIPAA because we're not medical workers. You have to be like medical personnel in order to violate HIPAA. That's what it applies to. It doesn't apply to just regular people dressed up like a medical worker taking people's temperatures. That's not medical, um, what would you call it? Help, medical work, taking somebody's temperature. That's just a screening process. And then we started like figuring out that we're uh, rubber gloves and we're gonna take them off and on again. We don't know which side was inside out or not. So I had to like write love and hate on my knuckles. And like, try, so I'd know when the outside was on the outside. And we're supposed to like sanitize everything every 30 minutes with these sandy wipes. But nobody even knows if sanitizer even kills coronavirus or not. You can't go in your little house right now. I got my camera right pocket. You're gonna have to go sit in the living room, put. So nobody knows if sanitizer even kills a coronavirus or not. And we're wasting all this valuable, valuable stuff. But we sent stuff to Australia. We had like a, a big old bottle of hand sanitizer. It was probably worth a couple grand <laughs> by Australia terms. Um, so that's this craziness that's been going on at work. And I got in trouble because I pointed out that you can't violate HIPAA if you're not a medical worker. And then... Um, so let's get into the, the panic buying. How do you panic buy? Well, I got behind this old woman a little while ago. She was buying like 10 or 12 big bottles of ketchup. And I don't know if she thinks she's going to be a ketchup warlord once we enter the wasteland. But here's what I bought at Walmart this morning. I went there like 545. I was going to get there early before there was anybody to get me sick. And they weren't open yet. They used to be 24-7. Now they're opening at 7 o'clock. I got refried beans, a uh, tin of cans of those. I just got the whole tray. Whatever they had left, I just got the whole tray. Chili beans, I got a 16 pack tray. Kidney beans, a 16 pack tray. I got two peanut butter, Peter Pan peanut butter. Now this is something I didn't expect from the, uh, the apocalypse. You don't learn about this in video games or movies. When everybody buys out all the Walmart brand shit, all that's left is the expensive brand shit so now I'm going to be like learning what expensive like brand name stuff tastes like in the apocalypse. I didn't expect to be eating like the good shit in the apocalypse, but apparently that's what it's going to be. I had to get the Stouffer's lasagnas because the great value lasagnas were all sold out. They were like $3 more, so it's like getting three for the price of four because it's like $3 extra per thing. But those are like 10, this was like $13 each and you can eat on them for like six meals. So that's like dollar meal and it's good but the peanut butter that's fucking gold peanut butter is worth its weight in gold in the apocalypse when you're like dying of hunger and sugar loss and you need something like peanut butter is the shit what was it it wasn't hunger games it was something i read that was like everybody was like really wanting that peanut butter 
Uh, but I got a big sack of potatoes, so I'm gonna have to eat those first because they'll go bad. Uh, another thing I've been doing is scavenging. It has just now hit dryland fish season or morel mushroom season. And I didn't know where to find any. I've been looking in the national park place where everybody says they find some, but you gotta worry about fucking snakes because I already saw snakes in my pond this year. And my boss's son, my boss said I got this spot I find every year there's a bunch. There's more than I can eat. I said, won't you tell me where it is? He's like, well, I've got people depending on me. i got to, like, give some of to his friends and stuff. But then his son came by and said, hey, you want to know where my dad's spot is? I said, yeah, he's over, you go over to the park. You go to the first bridge. You take a left. There's a little hill where the sun comes in. Well, like, it's so early in the year right now, there's no leaves on the trees, so, like, everything, the sun can come in. So I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know which bridge he's calling the first bridge. There's, like, five or six bridges. And you go left, and there's, like, another little bridge. But you're almost in somebody else's backyard because all of these are, like, in a residential area. It's not really, you're not really in the park anymore at that point. But I, I went right instead of left and I found them. I don't know if that's the spot he's talking about, but I found a shitload. I posted a pic, put a picture of them up there. So I found one on the 13th, Friday the 13th. And I went back two days later and they bloomed up and I found like a whole mess of them. That was like two meals worth. And then I went back two days later and I found another meals worth. So I've had like three big dry on fish meals just from scavenging mushrooms. So here's another thing. You gotta have eggs with them, cause that's but you don't eat drowning fish without eggs. So I went to the local grocery store. It looked like a war zone. There was no toilet paper. The whole thing was emptied out. I went to the egg aisle. There's three dozens, three dozen of eggs. Each one of them has already been opened. One of them, they're all like green looking, like they're a bunch of rotten eggs. I'm assuming this is where everybody like picked through and like picked the rotten eggs out and put it in a carton, and they just ended up putting them all in the same carton, maybe. And I found the next one had like a broken one in it. So I took that broken one out and just set it there on the rack and I took a good egg out of the other one, the third one, and I put it in there and I made me a dozen eggs. They were on like a dollar sixteen. Got me some eggs, it's great. But today I went to Walmart and I got like four eighteen packs. So that's like seventy two eggs. I'm good on eggs now. They were limiting you to like six per person, but they're two wrapped into one thing, so I don't know if they mean like six double packs which is like 12 times 18 eggs that's a shitload of eggs but I'm not gonna they would have gone bad for about that many eggs I just want enough to have to eat with my mushrooms so I got like two loaves of bread put them in the freezer or freeze loaves of bread you can do that I got a 30 pound bag of Old Roy I got two more ten dollar trays of dog food from a dog my dog's gonna be fucking sitting pretty uh, and I got an, oh, I got another one of the good shit, the uh, the was it Old Roy? I don't know, some kind of good dog food. Got like four big things of collard greens. I got two big things of yams. Two more cartons of almond milk because that lasts for like a month and a half. It doesn't go bad like regular milk because it's just water strained through nuts. Uh, GV Multi Two. I don't know what five forty eight. Oh, I got this like. Um, turkey and dressing because I didn't the Walmart didn't have the regular lasagna so I thought it didn't have anything so I'm gonna try that and see if it's any good I got some salsa to go with my beans I got a big old sack of rice like an eight nine dollar bag of rice I don't know how long that lasts me but that's a big bag of rice so I'm thinking rice and beans and soy sauce and shit's gonna be what I'm gonna live on once it really hits I think it's gonna like get real bad here pretty soon and you're not gonna be able to go to the store at all you're just gonna like shut everything down you'll be stuck in your house by the way, I'm on a, um, I'm laid off next week, so I'm at home for nine days. I'm gonna play video games and read books and watch TV. It's gonna be a fucking staycation. As long as I'm not sick from going out today, I think I'll be good. Although I might go out again Tuesday. I don't really need to now, though. I was gonna say, like, the, the store, the, the freight trucks run on Tuesdays and Fridays, I heard. So if they were gonna get new toilet paper in, I would go on Tuesday. Now I don't think I even have to worry about that, because I got this $5 a pack. I mean, it was $115 a pack on eBay, so I think that's a pretty good deal. I got two more things of shaving cream. I got two things of apple juice. I had to fire up my old refrigerator on my back porch. Now that's, it's not really secure because you could just walk on my back porch and take it if you know where I live, but I should have bought bullets. Bullets is the one thing I'm out of, and dog pee pads. If I had bullets and pee pads, I'd be good to go. Um... Got two pizzas. I got six mac and cheeses. That was all my Walmart stuff I bought. What is that, gas? If you got a way to store gas, you can store gas. 
but it gets less powerful the longer you let it sit. Oh, this is what I bought the other day. I bought a bunch of fucking cans of beans and greens, chili beans, mixed greens. I bought a shitload of Mountain Dews, like six or eight 12 packs or something. Um, almond grain, I mean, probably almond milk. Bought a bunch of chips, supreme pizzas, tomatoes, okra, cut green beans. All right, there's my toilet paper. Bought a big thing of soap. That's how you do it. What's valuable in Daisy? Mountain Dews, Red Bulls, beans, rice, cereal. Stuff that doesn't go bad. That's the kind of stuff you need to be stockpiling. And jockey milk if you can get it. Also check out this picture of this cave I found. It was fucking scary looking. If you fell out in there, you'd just be dead. Nobody would ever know. So I still got more room in my fridge on my back porch. You can see here that that's what I got today. I can go out and buy more stuff if I have to. I mean, it's kind of a waste of money, but it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Here's a picture of my fridge right now. I mean, I got like a couple of these meal prep things on the side, stir fries. Big cases of teas I've been taking out to work. And, uh, see, my fridge is kind of getting pretty low. Also, I got like two bags of flour because I figure we're going to go back to frontier times where we're going to have to just like make those hoe cakes like in the Great Depression. Remember, hoe cakes were a big deal back in the day. So I got two things of vegetable oil and the flour. I think that's what you need to make hoe cakes. I'm going to start cooking and frying shit like the old days. I got a big pack of pork shoulder that's frozen for like $12. I got some black cherry sodas. Yeah, that's for the gaming that I'm going to be doing all this week. <laughs> all right, I forgot to mention this. So... Here's the rumor. Uh, in my state, there was like, this was like two days ago, so the information is probably old. I think there was like 20 something cases of coronavirus. Maybe 200. I don't know, 20 seems low. But in my county, there was only one confirmed case. But the day before that, my friend of mine that I work with comes in on second shift. His sister is an EMT. And she said a lot of the EMTs around here, they found one guy with coronavirus and he got out of the hospital and he ran to his house or something and the police chasing him around at his house they quarantined all the EMTs that were dealing with him and she wasn't one of them so she didn't have to be quarantined that's why she was telling him this and she says there's actually like 20 cases in the county that they're not telling anybody about so there's more people out there that have it than they're reporting and then yesterday I heard uh, the town the next town over there was a case where somebody I don't know if they even had the coronavirus, but there was some situation where they pulled like the gun off somebody at the hospital, like a cop that was there, and they shot a nurse in the leg. So there's a lot of crazy shit going on right now that nobody's really known about. And I don't know, the people that are panic buying the original wave, like uh, two weeks ago, the original wave, like first wave. This is fucking the division from Tom Clancy. When I was walking through Walmart earlier, it was like when you go into the contaminated zone in the division. Like some people have the little masks on and like you're worried to like everything around you is contaminated and shit. So, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, the first wave of panic buyers. I'm pretty sure probably like the EMTs that know all these super secret stuff about how many real cases are out there. And they're like their families, they tell them and then they go and panic buy all the toilet paper. Try to sell it to Australia and all this stuff. People trying to make money on it. People that are just trying to like hold it up for, like, if you have enough bullets, you just go to somebody that has the toilet paper and you get toilet paper that way. You start raiding people. I mean, that's how it works. Let's be honest. Fucking crazy as shit. I came home the other day. This hasn't got nothing to do with coronavirus, but I had my shotgun out because my, I come home, my dogs are barking. I went to the window and there's a turkey walking across my yard, like in the little strip of woods next to my house. I was like, what the fuck? I never seen no turkeys this close to my house. And then I got my shotgun out in the middle of the rain. I was going to shoot it. <laughs> because, like, now, if the government shuts down, people are going to start poaching animals like deer and stuff and other people's cows, probably. You're gonna, people are going to start losing their cows because people are going to start shooting them and taking them and shit. But, like, what about, like, all these people that are canceling all their concerts and all these like, things that are planned for the whole year that they've sold advertising for and people are going to have to give back all that money, all that advertising money, 
like the economy. This is the worst part of it, I think, is that that stock market crashed, dude. They put, back when the housing bubble burst, they threw money at that shit. Just to like calm everybody's fears to keep the stock market from crashing. They put like 500 billion in and it didn't do shit. And then they put another one and a half trillion in and it didn't do shit. The next day it still just fell off of a cliff and they had to just shut her down. This was like three or four days ago, I guess now. So I don't know what it's been doing since if they've even opened the stock market to even be, because as soon as they open it, they got to shut it down within a minute because everybody just starts selling all their shit as fast as they can. But like, it seems like a good time to buy stuff, really, because everything's cheap as fuck. And if we do manage to live through this, you'll be rich when you come out the other end of it. But I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, that's kind of like what I've been going through. I mean, if you think about it in another way, if you think about it like the Earth's trying to get rid of the virus that is humans, like the most polluted part of the, the planet is China. And that's where all these viruses originate from. I'm not trying to sound racist with this, but it's just like a fact. If you live in on top of each other with billions of people in the same city, and you're like in really dangerous conditions where your industries are polluting the air and shit, like you're going to have a lot of viruses come out of that because it's not a clean place to live. So the Earth's trying to kill us, and the most polluted place is where it's going to start. So this could be a good thing because, like. A big genocide or like a, a virus kind of clears up humanity and like gets rid of the population that we're overpopulated you can't just make a law and say we're gonna have to start killing all the old people but the virus is gonna do that but it's like you can't blame anybody it's a natural disaster but really we live way too long anyway as human beings like animals don't live to be a hundred years old or 80 years old they live like seven eight years and they fuck a few times and they have babies and then they're gone like a wolf eats them we're not supposed to be sitting around our houses like 80 years old, like wasting resources on like caregivers and nursing homes and stuff. It's just like draining the economy and a strain on everybody. I mean, it gives people jobs, but it's just a job taking care of somebody else. I mean, it's not really helping society. It's just something to do. I hate to say it. I mean, I'm sure people, old people have valuable information they could hand down to us, but they're not doing it. <laughs> Nobody's hanging out with their old people and listening to them and getting advice from them. It'd be cool if they did. But, like, I hope people don't know anything about the internet. But they were around since the beginning of the internet. They should know the most about the internet, but they don't care. They don't want to keep up with stuff. They just want to sit home and watch Matlock. And watch, like, my, my grandma. She watches uh, the Hallmark Channel and cooking shows 24-7. That's all she does. I love my grandma, but as society, <laughs> she's not really distributing to society. Then well, I should have done this from the start. Look how that it looks so much more level. So I think this virus could be a good thing. In the end, when it's all said and done, there'll be more resources for less people and the environment will be less polluted. Maybe the damn ice caps won't have to melt and we won't die from that because there'll be less pollution. Have you seen the maps of how like China and Italy, since everybody's been quarantined and stuff and nobody's working, that the pollution has just gone away and like they can see the stars at night now for the first time in years. They've never, they're like, what the fuck is this? Sky with stars in it. What the hell? Look, they've never seen it before. They're not going to go back to polluting and shit. Hopefully. Hopefully they get addicted to having clean air and shit. 